Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Persia for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now for this guide, I am going to be starting as a Jom since this is a Persia guide and not an Ardabil guide or a guide for the Shahanshah achievement. So we are going to be starting as a Jom since it is the easiest way to form Persia in my opinion. Now a Jom starts in a pretty strong position itself with the main threats being QQ and the Timur but other weaker nations also surround it. But you will have a very easy time forming Persia if you follow this strategy. So let's get started. First, we're gonna take the adopt the title of Khalifa decision and the enforce religious unity decision. We're not gonna change our religion to Shiite. Next, we're gonna rival only the Timurids for now. And we are gonna be taking the efficient tax farming taxation policy. After that, we're gonna summon the diet and you can pick whichever agenda is best for you and we're gonna seize land. We're gonna give the ulama clerical advisory council, the emirs increased levies and aristocratic counselors as well as strong duchies. We're gonna give the merchant guilds patronage of the arts and commercial advisory board and we're gonna give the dimi guaranteed religious minority rights. After this we're gonna send an alliance to Uzbek, royal Mary, one of our subjects and send a scornful insult to the Timurids. Next, we're gonna hire some advisors. I'm gonna take this national tax guy, a diplo rep guy or improve relations guy is always excellent, so I do have one and I am gonna take him. And a discipline or morale guy would be great. I have a discipline one. I'm also gonna hire the free company now. It doesn't matter where. And I am gonna give my ruler military command and put him in charge of the main army. After this, I am gonna exploit development in the manpower section in about five provinces. Now we're gonna unpause and wait for our diplomats to come back as well as for the free company to pop out. Now once your free army recruits, you should fulfill the mission prepare for war and build the force limit. By mistake, I scornfully insulted the Timurids, so you should just regular insult them and you will also unlock this mission too. So regular insult on the Timurids, not a scornful one. By unlocking that one mission, we got claims on the Timurids and we can declare on them. We're also gonna royal marry our other subject and start building a spy network on Mazandran. And we're gonna build a spy network on the Timurids as well. Now we just need to wait for the spy network on Mazandran to reach 20 or for Shah Rukh, the ruler of the Timurids, to die. One of those two. So what do we need to form Persia. As we can see, we need to own the core province of Yazd, which is right here. We need to own one of Amal or Shiraz, which is this province right here, or this province right here. And we need to own one of Tabriz, Kerman, and Mashhad, which is Tabriz is right here, Kerman is right here, and Mashhad is right here. So we have to own Yazd and we need one of the other provinces. Now the way we're gonna form Persia is we're gonna take Yazd from the Timurids, we're gonna take Kerman from the Timurids, and that leaves us with one of these two provinces, Amal or Shiraz. Now, when the Timurids vassal declare their independence war once Shah Rukh dies, if Fars is on the side of the Timurids, we're gonna be taking Shiraz from Fars. If Fars is fighting against the Timurids, then we're gonna be taking Amal from Mazandran. Either way, it's usually Amal since you do get a spy network on Mazanjan before Shah Rukh dies, but let's see how it goes in my case. Maybe it will be different than yours, but it's pretty much the same execution. So we need Yaz, Kerman, and Shiraz or Amal. So let's wait for Shah Rukh to die or the spy network on Mazandran to finish. Now, if you get an invite from one of Timurid's vassals to support their independence, you should accept that. You should also offer to support other vassals' independence. As you can see, I can support Sistan and Afghanistan's independence, and that's exactly what I am going to do. So just as I made a claim on Amal in Mazandran, Shah Rukh also died. And it does happen pretty often that he dies early to be honest. Only in about maybe 10% of your games he actually won't die and the Timurids will consolidate their lands. But it does happen very quickly, very often. So since we can have both wars at the same time, I'm actually gonna wait for Timurids as vassals to declare the independence war. If this doesn't happen in your game, this is the time to declare on Mazandran. 99% of the time, 
they will only be allied to Shirvan. And this will be a very easy war, which I will demonstrate after the war with the Timurids. As you can see, all of his vassals now have 100% liberty desire, well except Khorasan, which he made into a march. But either way, they will declare independence war very soon now. And there we go, in my case, Khorasan declared the independence war, and of course I am automatically dragged in, since I am supporting their independence. There wasn't a call to arms if you support their independence. And now since Faris is actually on my side, we're only going to be taking Yazd and Kerman from the Timurids and separate piecing them. So only those two provinces, maybe we can take a little bit more, we'll see. And after that, we'll be declaring on Mazandran. So just occupy these provinces, siege down some forts, and you should be able to piece out in no time. These two provinces cost only 22% war score. So as you can see, our side has around 32% war score against the Timurids. Personally, I have 23% myself, and this is enough to take the provinces of Yazd and Kerman along with 30 ducats. So you should only take these two provinces for yourself and separate piece. We don't want to be in this war any longer than we have to be and we need to set our sights on Mazandran. It doesn't matter if in your case you fought Mazandran first, this is the same thing that you're gonna do in your war against the Timurids. In my case, I will be fighting Mazandran now. And as soon as our army is into position, we are gonna declare on Mazandran in the conquest of Amal. Like I said, 99% of the time, they're only gonna be allied to Shirvan. It's an easy war, but it is annoying that they both have a level 3 for it. Either way, just set your subjects to siege and let them attach to this army right here and they should help you out in this siege while you siege out Amal for yourself. Once you full occupy Shirvan or whoever their ally is, we're gonna pillage their capital, take war reps, take all their money and end a rivalry or two and end some alliances. And of course, we are gonna full annex Mazandran. Not only do we need Amal to form Persia, but we also need the province of Sari to spawn the Renaissance. So we are gonna full annex them and take all their money. Now, once you have the three provinces that we need to form Persia, like I said, Yazd, Kerman, and one of Amal or Shiraz, we need to wait for the course to finish. And in your case, you might be doing this a little later, depending on when Shah Rukh died and depending on whether Fars was on your side or not, and if you fought Mazandran. Either way, if you took Shiraz, Yazd, and Kerman in that war with the Timurids, you're still gonna wanna take this province from Mazandran, which basically means you're gonna be declaring on them anyway. And like I said, it might be a little bit later in your case. Either way, now we're gonna wait for these scores to finish. At this point, I also recommend allying whoever is a rival of QQ. So in my case, it's the Mamluks and the Great Horde and me. I can't ally the Mamluks, but I will ally the Great Horde and I will ally Ak Kuyunlu if they are allied to the Ottoman, which they are, so I will do that. They should be willing to help you out in your war against QQ, so this alliance is needed. QQ aren't that strong, but they have a lot of forts and a lot of mountain forts, so it is annoying to fight them. And now that the cores on the provinces we need to form Persia, Yazd, Kerman, and Amal have finished, it is time to form Persia. And of course we will take new traditions and ambitions. Not only do we become Persia, but we also become an empire, gain the feudal theocracy government reform, which gives us plus one missionary, plus one percent missionary strength, plus two percent tolerance of the true faith, plus 50 governing capacity, and plus five percent ulama loyalty. And we also get the unique government interactions, which are seize clerical holdings, invite minorities from abroad, and sanction holy war, which are very powerful interactions, all of them, as you can see. In my case, I'm not going to take any of them yet because I don't need them yet, but we are going to take them when we need them. And also now that we are Persia, we do get claims on all of these lands over here. We do technically have less missions than Ajam has, but it doesn't matter. And we get the excellent Persian ideas, which gives us plus 10% morale of armies and plus 15% cavalry combat ability as traditions. And we get some manpower, goods produced, discipline, caravan power, reduction efficiency and prestige, manpower recovery speed, tax and recover army morale speed ideas further along. And Persian ideas are very powerful. Now time to focus on cleaning up some of these smaller nations here. You need to pick the weakest one of course, in my case it's Ardabil, they are only allied to Gilan. So I am gonna declare on Gilan, who has these allies, and I'm gonna call Ardabil.
Now, once you become Persia, you will also get the event Persian Shiism, where you can become Shia without losing the two stability from this decision, or you can choose to gain one stability too. Now, this is totally your choice, and I am going to become Shia for the purpose of this playthrough, but I am also going to demonstrate how to become Zoroastrian later on. And I am going to recommend taking the shock damage plus 10% school and taking the enforced religious unity decision. Now, once you do get to diplomatic tech four and you can build marketplaces, I recommend building it in all the provinces which have centers of trade, of course, like Tehran and Isfahan and sorry, as well as Yazd. And once the war is finished, I will, of course, full annex both of these nations right here. And that I might also fulfill this mission for you. Now, once we're done with those first couple of wars, it's time to spawn the Renaissance, or at least push it a bit. And we're going to do that in the province of Sari, since it will be the cheapest. It does produce silk, which is an excellent trade good, and it is also a center of trade. So first, we're going to concentrate development here so we make it cheaper. If you have admin points, make it into a state, activate the encourage development state edict, and we're going to be devving that up in mill and in diplo power also an admin if you have it and while you're spawning the renaissance we're gonna chill for a year or two and get ready to declare on qq and while we're waiting for that it's time to explain how to flip to zoroastrian which is basically one of the main points of this guide so of course we have the province of yazd which is zoroastrian it is part of our state right here and as we can see here the only rebels that can pop up are persian noble rebels so we're gonna send a missionary to yazd lower missionary maintenance all the way down and we're gonna wait for a month to tick as you can see we have zoroastrian zealots right here and they can grow and should pop out in 26 years now that's quite a long time so what we are gonna do is we're gonna decrease autonomy in yas which will significantly increase the local unrest and as you can see the time for these rebels to pop up has decreased from 26 to 7 years and of course this can be further sped up by increasing war exhaustion decreasing stability and stuff like that but it's basically just a waiting game until these zoroastrian zealous right here in yas pop up and we are gonna be getting into a big war with qq soon so war exhaustion should come up and if there's an event for you to lose stability while you're waiting on these rebels you should lose stability from the event once you have your troops positioned like this it's time to declare on qq and we are gonna declare for whichever province you have a claim on in my case i'm just gonna declare for this province ilam right here and of course we are gonna call in whoever is willing to come most notably aq For your second government reform, which you should be getting around this time, I recommend taking Strengthen Noble Privileges. As you can see, I've occupied these parts of QQ. I've pieced out their ally Shirvan. They only have this small ally right here, which doesn't matter. And now I do have enough war score to take all of their capital state, which we are going to do in order to advance our mission tree. So we're going to take their entire capital state. It is quite a bit of aggressive expansion, but it's not a problem. Honestly, you could fight them even more in order to take war reps and money, but I'm not going to do that because the Zoroastrian zealots are right about to pop out. So we need to deal with this. So I'm just going to piece them out and take their entire capital state. Now, once that war is over, we're going to provoke the Zoroastrian zealots. And you can do this even when they're at 50%. I'm just going to do it now because you couldn't do it if you're at a war. And there we go, we have Zoroastrian Zealots. Now these guys are gonna walk around and convert provinces when they occupy them. So what we are gonna do is turn off all our forts. Luckily, our fort in the capital is only a level one, so they will take it pretty quickly. And we will turn off all other forts and just hide up here in the corner or somewhere. Now, what you do need to be careful of is other rebels popping out somewhere. So, if you see other rebels about to pop out, which could defeat these rebels, you need to go take care of them quickly. And we're just going to wait for them to conquer provinces until 50% of our country is Zoroastrian. You should also take this mission, of course. Don't forget to concentrate development. So as you can see now they've taken over a second province and it is Zoroastrian. Now if you're ever confused as to how you will know when 50% of your country is a certain religion, you can go into the ledger, go into economy and charts 
and here we can see some pie charts. As we can see, 82% of our country is Shia, 8.6% is Sunni, and 8.6% is Zoroastrian. Now you can track this chart to know how close you are to hitting that 50% threshold. If your vassals start unoccupying these provinces, don't worry about it, they're already Zoroastrian. While we're waiting for these guys to do some converting of the last few provinces, as we can see a lot of my provinces are already Zoroastrian. And they did travel from here all the way to here to other countries, luckily they didn't get wiped out. But we are going to be unlocking our first idea group, and I do recommend taking religious ideas for your first idea group. We're gonna be the only Zoroastrian nation in the world and all of these benefits will help us a lot, especially this last idea right here. So pick religious ideas and focus on admin power. Now one thing you do need to watch out for is that they shouldn't enforce demands before you're able to convert. As you can see their demands are different. So you will lose prestige and gain autonomy if they manage to enforce their demands instead of flipping Zoroastrian and you'll be left with half Zoroastrian provinces. Make sure to take some of these provinces back after they convert them. Now it did take quite a long time as you can see it's been about 5 years and they have finally converted enough provinces as we can see here from their demands to change from us getting autonomy and losing prestige to us flipping to Zoroastrian and now we are gonna accept their demands and as you can see we are now Zoroastrian we can pick a new tier 1 government reform you can go for whichever one you like I'm gonna go for the autocracy one right now and here is the Zoroastrian interface and we can see the holy sites Shirvan, Daman, Laristan, Kiva, Sabzevar and we can go to all of them basically and that's how you flip to Zoroastrian now you can either stay Sunni if you want to from the beginning you can become Shia through that event once you become Persia or you can become Zoroastrian like like this through rebels you can go with whichever one you want all three are very strong as Persia and we can take advantage of the Baku Atejga monument which is a very very strong monument so now that you know how to flip to Shia and to Zoroastrian let's continue with the guide now that all that is done we're gonna be declaring on the Timurids again if they still exist in your case in my case they do and we're gonna be focusing on taking some of our claims here as well as the holy Zoroastrian site of Laristan if you win Zoroastrian if not you can take whatever you want but we are going to be declaring on the timurids and we're going to call in whoever is willing to come for your first stage ability i recommend taking the justified wars or the transfer subject ones i'm going to take the justified wars one now that I have enough war score, I'm going to take these four provinces in this war. Now in your case, it might be something else. The Timurids might look differently. Either way, you're basically going to focus on centers of trade and wealthy provinces and the holy site province right here if you are a Zoroastrian. So that's why I'm taking these two centers of trade, this province and this province. And I'm going to take some money from them. And I'm going to take this province too since it is a center of trade. Now we can't take advantage of that holy site yet, we do need to convert it to Zoroastrian so we will be able to pick a blessing. Now that we have taken care of the Timurids for a second time, it's time to chill for a year or two and get ready to declare on Shirvan so we can take the Baku Atejga monument. And now that some time has passed and we have finished most of our cores here, it's time to declare on Shirvan. Usually they won't have any strong allies so this will be an easy war. Once you have defeated Shirvan in this war, of course we're gonna take the province of Shirvan, which not only has the Baku Atejga monument, which we need because we're Zoroastrian, but it's also a holy site. Now even if you didn't go Zoroastrian, you will still be expanding this way. So take whatever you can, I'm not gonna full annex them because of aggressive expansion, but I am gonna leave them with one province and take all their money. Don't forget to concentrate development. So after about 20 to 30 years, your game should look a little something like this. Maybe you have conquered a little more than me, maybe a little less, it doesn't matter. You will generally have a large control over this region and will have defeated both the Timurids and Karakoyunlu, which are your biggest rivals at the start of the game. After this point, you should continue expanding in this region with the ultimate goal of owning Persia, Khorasan, all the Indian regions, Mashriq, Arabia, Egypt, and a 
Anatolia, Caucasia and the Balkans by the end of your game. And of course you should keep moving your trade capital all the way to Constantinople by the late game. You should of course focus on building marketplaces in the center of trade provinces as well as workshops in all these extremely high value trade good provinces which there is a ton of in the Persia region as you can see almost all of these trade goods are very high value. If you went Zoroastrian by now you should own two or three of these holy sites and by getting religious ideas you will be able to convert them soon enough and you will be able to start picking your rituals. I recommend going for the missionary strength one first followed by the local goods produced one then governing capacity then corruption and construction cost. You should have all of these in no time since all of them are very close. Once you start accumulating a lot of money you will be focusing on getting the Baku Atejga monument up to level 3 as soon as you can as you receive some great bonuses from it. And there's also a lot of monuments over here, over here and over here which will help you in your conquest even further. For your next idea group I recommend taking offensive ideas followed by economic ideas and later quality. After that you can take trade ideas and quantity. And by the mid game you will have your own version of the Persian space marines and your army will be unstoppable. Of course you will continue down the mission tree which gives you some claims on the areas and regions around you. The mission tree isn't too extensive but it will help you out a bit. And you could even go on to do the this is Persia achievement which requires you to form Persia which we've already done on Egypt, Anatolia and Greece. A very fun achievement in my opinion. So now you know what's the easiest way to form Persia starting as a jam. You can of course stay Sunni. I also showed you how to become Shia without losing stability and I also showed you how to become Zoroastrian. I do recommend going Shia or Zoroastrian just for the flavor and I think you will have much more fun if you go with one of those two rather than staying as Sunni but it is your choice. After this point just continue expanding in all directions. Nearly all of your neighbors will be weaker than you and you should have no problem beating the Mamluks and even the Ottomans. Once you own most of this region and with the excellent idea groups you will pick as well as with the help of the Shia or Zoroastrian religions. Just be careful with aggressive expansion as you can see I've accumulated quite a lot and have not expanded that much so watch out for coalitions. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation you guys want to see a guide on. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed so it would really mean a lot and I've also launched channel memberships. So if you want to support the channel with more than subscribing you can check out the join button down below and join the discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.